Now, authentication, what we're talking about here is, is how you control access to your instances once you've created them. Okay. Now, typically, um, we would use a username and a password for that. But a username and a password isn't particularly secure. Um, and to give you an idea, um, every new IP address, so internet address, so each new uh, address that we make available in pause is scanned within a fraction of a second of it actually being made public, mostly by bots, um, sometimes by manual hackers, but within a fraction of a second of that, that IP being made available, it gets scanned. And if you've used a, a weak username and password for that instance, then it can be hacked. And then they can take control of the instance and you know, uh, they can use it all for, for bit mining or whatever they want to use it for. Um, obviously, we would hopefully be able to, to notice that's being used and we'd be able to destroy it, but it's not something that you want happening. So by default, we don't allow username and passwords for instances. By default, they're set up with what are called uh, SSH keys. Okay. Key pairs, if you like. And with SSH keys, you have uh, two keys, hence key pairs. You have a public key, which you can think of as a username. And you have a private key, which you could think of as the password. The public key is actually stored on your instance. The private key you download and you keep on your local machine and it should be treated as a password as it, that is, you should treat it with the utmost, uh, with, you know, with security utmost in your mind at all times. Don't share it. Don't, you know, transfer it anywhere. Don't put it on a Google doc. Okay. And then, what happens is when you try and log into your instance, the instance will say, okay, you, you need to have this username or this key. Do you have your private key? And then if you do, they talk to each other and then you're allowed access. So the question for you is, does anyone know why key pairs are more secure than using a username and password? Luke's got his hand up. Uh, Luke, you can go for it. Is it because you continually encrypt the communication back and forth? Um, yes, but it's more the fact that um, you're not actually communicating your password. Okay? You don't type in your password and that password is not sent to the machine. It just looks at your encrypted key and says, yes, this is the right one. So you're not actually transmitting it. Plus there's the fact that um, a password might be, you know, eight, 12 characters. The private key that you create by minimum is 2048 characters. So it's much harder to brute force. Um, there's also the fact that you're not typing the, the, the key, um, the password in, so if someone's got a, a keyboard logger, you know, installed some malware that would track the keys, they can't get the password from you. The flip side is that if you get your private key, because it's a file, if it's stolen or if you lose it, then at best your key pair becomes useless and you can't access your instance. At worst, someone else can then use your key pair to access all of your instances. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually generate a key pair okay, from the Nimbus dashboard. Uh, and then we'll have that available whenever we create an instance. Okay, so let's go to here. Yeah, I'll log in again to the dashboard. Get that full size. 
008 is my username, Pawsey is the domain name. My password is Village Gerbil. I log in. Um, all right, then I go. I want to create a key pair. So under compute, you'll see there's a tab key pairs. I click on that, that loads. You have no key pairs currently for this account. Okay, I come up here, these are my options. If you are already using key pairs, so for example, if you've been using them on AWS, Amazon, or Microsoft Azure, or Google, you can import those keys so that you don't have to keep creating new ones, okay? Uh, we will be creating a key pair. So we go ahead, create key pair. We give it some kind of meaningful name. Um, so I'm just gonna call it training. We create. Okay, now it's created a key pair. So it's created a public key which it will keep with the dashboard so that it's available to install or, or you know, um, put onto any instances you may. The private key is now being downloaded to my machine. Okay? And it's very important that you know where that private key is because you need to be able to reference it when you're logging into your instance. So, uh, there are some places, you know, we can um, talk about best practices is to put it in a, a hidden folder in your home directory called .ssh, because you're using SSH. But for training purposes, it doesn't really matter. You just need to know where it is. So I will go ahead and put it on my desktop. And I've saved it. And I should, you know, Technically speaking, I should probably write that down so that I know what it's called and where it is. But you'll see that we now have created a key pair. Okay, and we can use that to log into our instance when we create it. 